Hey everyone, another music production lecture for you. This time we're going to focus on MIDI technology. Um, so MIDI is one of those things that uh, falls into the realm of audio production, um, but is less recording actual real-world sounds using microphones and things like that. And it's more kind of in the box using computer technology um, and, and potentially could and has, um, in recent years, almost eliminated the need for any sort of actual physical recording of, an, of a real-world instrument or something like that. So definitely something that we need to explore and you should at least be aware of. And, and please understand that this topic is one that goes real deep um, and gets very specific. So we're going to be doing like an overview. Um, and if this is of interest to you, then it's definitely something you might want to explore further. Um, but we'll talk through some things about MIDI look at some examples uh, and uh, you know go over specific terms and then I want to jump over to Pro Tools and show you some of the basic foundational stuff um, and how we use MIDI in uh, a digital audio workstation like Pro Tools. Okay so what is MIDI? It's an acronym. It stands for Music Instrument Digital Interface. And why does that matter? Uh, basically what we're talking about here now is a computer, like a software language um, between electronic instruments and computers. So a lot of times it'll be a MIDI keyboard or a MIDI controller. So something, uh, some sort of electronic device that's going to send information, that's going to speak this language that can interact with computer software like Pro Tools or another digital audio workstation and send information to tell it to do things or playback sound um, in a particular way, or to um, to generate some sort of automation or movement with an effects processor based on specific movements on an uh, electronic device. So we're controlling not only the the software side of things, but it, it can also control external hardware that's sort of plugged into the whole mix. So we can use MIDI technology to uh, communicate with external hardware devices and trigger them, allow them to generate sounds or play back in a sequence or play certain pitches, those kind of things. Uh, so let's let's explore a little bit. Uh, this video is a couple years old now, but it, it talks about um, the history a little bit of MIDI, and then we'll go from there. One standard started it all. One technology allowed different musical devices and computers to all speak the same language and make beautiful music together. 30 years ago, MIDI was born, and the rest is history. It all began in the early 1980s when two electronic musical instrument pioneers shared a vision of synthesizers with different manufacturers communicating with each other and connecting to computers through one simple interface. Along with other manufacturers in Japan and the United States, they collaborated to develop the Musical Instrument Digital Interface Specification, or MIDI for short and then publicly demonstrated the first two products equipped with MIDI technology at the Winter NAMM Show in January 1983. Dozens more MIDI-equipped keyboards appeared soon after, but perhaps the biggest impact of this new technology was the introduction of MIDI interfaces and software for personal computers, enabling the recording editing, and playback of synthesizer performances in a process known as MIDI sequencing. What started as the simple capture of a single keyboard performance quickly grew to the ability to manipulate and orchestrate dozens, then hundreds, of tracks and instruments to perform every kind of music imaginable. MIDI transformed the music industry 30 years ago and continues to be an essential technology in the creation and enjoyment of music every day. In professional studios, in home studios, in living rooms, for film music, for education, for games, and for karaoke. 
Today, almost every type of musical instrument and music-related device is available with MIDI, including guitars, wind instruments, bowed instruments, accordions, drum sets, and even iPads and iPhones. The power and flexibility of MIDI technology has brought it into many other areas as well, such as live sound and stage lighting, robotics, and displays at entertainment attractions and theme parks. In the music products industry alone, MIDI devices account for $4 billion in equipment sales annually, with hundreds of companies making products that use MIDI technology. These numbers will grow even larger as MIDI evolves into the future with web browser integration, faster data speeds, and much more. As the organization of companies that support and extend the MIDI specification, the MIDI Manufacturers Association celebrates the 30th anniversary of MIDI throughout 2013 by highlighting the past, present, and future impact of MIDI in the creation, performance, and enjoyment of music. To learn more about our 30th anniversary celebration, MIDI technology, and the companies that make MIDI products, please visit www.midi.org slash midi30. All right, I'm fully aware of how cheesy that video is, but it, um, it does have a good comprehensive view of sort of what MIDI is, where it came from, what it's capable of doing. And even though it's just sort of generating a list of those things, it gives you a bigger picture than it's just, you know, a, a piano keyboard that you plug into your computer. There's a lot more to it than that. Um, what's interesting, I think, about the history of this is that, you know, 35 plus years ago now, um, there's no MIDI 2.0 or something like that. This is stable technology that has existed and is, is, has evolved in what it's doing, but the, the technology is still exactly the same. So that's a pretty incredible stable piece of technology for that length of time, especially if you consider how, how often you need to upgrade an iPhone or something like that. That's pretty incredible that that's lasted for that long. So just to recap, uh, Robert Moog introduced, uh, announced MIDI technology in 1982, and that was in collaboration with some other people. And then it was standardized in 1983, so everyone sort of adopted this as the universal way to use this type of technology, um, which I guess in, in itself is a pretty incredible thing that there was you know, sort of this collaborative effort um, instead of, you know, making, you know, having some sort of proprietary software for, for each uh, developer, this is a standardized piece of uh, technology for everyone. Um, and that's been a, a great thing um, as far as collaboration and growth on, on what MIDI can do. That's a, that's a very positive thing. Uh, maintained by the MIDI Manufacturers Association. So there is like an official group that oversees like the development of this technology. Um, and I think that also, uh, you know, says something about its sustainability. So what kind of impact has MIDI had on technology, on how music is made, the type of music that's made? Well, that's pretty, uh, pretty important to, to delve into. So after a sort of a stale period uh, of music making, it's really sort of brought a new sort of production element and revived music in the 80s. If you think about what happened to music in the 80s, all of a sudden we're introducing drum sequencers and um, synthesizers and all sorts of like robotic elements that sort of really identify or, uh, yeah, identify music um, of that era. So you think of bands uh, like New Order or Depeche Mode, or something like that. Bands that you, you know, if you just think of 80s new wave music, you're going to think of MIDI technology, that, that very rigid, sort of stiff, synthetic drum sound. Um, I would urge you to spend a little time going down a YouTube rabbit hole and listening to music from the 70s and the 80s and how it evolved, um, and then realize that, that this MIDI technology played an important role in that shift. So we're we're able, using MIDI technology, we're simplifying the composition process and what it's like to arrange something. You know, whereas before we might have to take all this effort to record different uh, instruments and it was challenging to rearrange compositions. If you said, well, I recorded, like if, if a piece of music had an A and a B section 
and you wanted to flip-flop those things, it was much more challenging to do so. Here we can just sort of drag and drop this technology and then it will get played back in real time and it, it really allows you to experiment without having to go through all the legwork of recording in different ways. But that also has some drawbacks, if you think about that. That also means that it's opened up the door for, for well, less musical people to be able to be successful at that. And there's some arguments to be made about what that has done to the, the music industry itself. Right? We don't need as many musicians. You don't have to be as good a musician. Because MIDI technology allows you to, say, fix less than perfect performances. You don't need to practice that instrument since you're six years old. You can, well, you don't even need to necessarily play that instrument. I, I don't need to be a virtuoso guitar to create a really cool sounding guitar part because I can use my mediocre piano skills to create those kinds of things and use a mouse to edit them. That's that changes the game a little bit. So we need fewer musicians potentially, and it led to the mainstream ability to record from home. Um, and also be able to, you know, so you have like bedroom music producers that are just using MIDI technology and, and really actually making chart topping hit music from the bedroom, from the road, whatever it might be. Okay. Uh, so let's dive into the technology itself a little bit now that we're done with this conversation about you know what, what MIDI technology has done and um, some of the gritty stuff that we need to get into. Um, uh, terms that you need to know. An event message are things like the pitch of a note that's going to be played back. So what notes are being played when? Velocity is represents the strength of the sound. So not you know, we've talked about velocity in a different respect in regards to, you know, real world sound, and, and that's the speed of sound. Here it's the strength of how that sound is being played back. So I might be able to record MIDI information on, on, on a controller like a keyboard, um, and then I can adjust the strength at which it's going to be played back when I hear it. And notation. So the timing and arrangement of all these different notes and velocities and things. So these event messages are, are really all the language, the information that MIDI is, is bringing to your software to say when to do these things and how to do them. So that's an event message. Um, but we can go a lot further than that. There's event messages and then there's control signals. Control signals are going to do things like allow you to control Pro Tools plug-in parameters. So I can use a dial or a fader on a MIDI controller to adjust some of the controls within an effects unit in Pro Tools or to control the volume faders in the virtual mixing console in Pro Tools. Right, I might want to um, effectively do like a, a filter sweep, like an EQ filter sweep, right? So adjust the, the, the frequency point of like a low pass filter and I can do that by adjusting MIDI controls that will um, then re be reflected in the software. All right, I can control external instruments, um, hardware synthesizers or something. I can use control signals to tell them what to do at what time. So that would be MIDI acting as a control signal for an external instrument. And then even in, in back in the, the MIDI history video, they were talking about things like attractions uh, at amusement parks or like, um, I always think about when you, when you go to like a really big concert production, back when we were allowed to do those kinds of things. Um, and oftentimes there's, there's somebody operating, you know, an audio console doing the sound for, for the live event. But there's also oftentimes someone that is controlling a controller of sorts that is using MIDI technology to trigger lights, to set off uh, different pyrotechnic effects that need to happen. I think of like, you know, going to Rob Zombie or, or Black Sabbath concerts and seeing things like that. And during specific moments in the performance, you've actually got essentially like a MIDI performer off on the side of the stage that is messing with this controller and basically pushing buttons at, of control signals that are triggering certain things on, on stage like lights and pyrotechnics to happen with the music. Okay, and another one is clock signals. 
So this is where we're going to have this synchronization between hardware and software. So we have to have, if, if we're going to incorporate all these different elements now, we, some part of this MIDI technology has to be able to, to, to keep things in line. And, and that's really important because the external and the internal software have to sort of be able to communicate with one another and realize who's boss. And that's where people always chuckle at this one. But the clock signal is going to determine who's a slave and who's a master. And that's a real term that happens um, when you're using, say, multiple different pieces of software to interact with one another. Like, for example, um, I tend to use one piece of software called Propeller Heads Reason um, that has like virtual instruments and um, different kinds of sounds. Um, but I, I want Pro Tools to, to be where I'm editing and controlling all that stuff. So I designate Pro Tools as the master and this other piece of software as a slave um, because one of those pieces of software has to be designated to be in control. And the clock signal um, allows you to do that choose which one is going to be working. Okay, let's see this uh, applied in action. And I will uh, jump into Pro Tools and I'll show you a couple of things using a MIDI controller. Um, but here's some more important terms. So sequencing is going to be the actual, like, decided programmed things that happen, right? So uh, when I'm sequencing something, that's when I'm deciding when those event messages, when those control signals are, are going to occur. Right, so it's, it's about timing. And those things can be um, played back on a controller, like a keyboard, or you know you saw pictures of wind instruments that have MIDI technology, right? So you can record those and perform them, or you can write them by clicking with a mouse. And that's what I mean when I was, was saying that maybe the MIDI technology has allowed people that don't necessarily belong in the music industry to make a name for themselves because you don't actually have to be good at the instrument in order to sequence something. So you have this this whole um, you know new generation of musicians that aren't really musical at all. They're more computer programmers than they are musician. Um, but that doesn't prevent them from taking advantage of this technology and using it to make music. Um, and here's an important: if you learned anything from today, it's that you can be really nerdy with your sequencing and you can still make interesting music. Uh, so you'll find lots of things like this on the internet, but here is a sequenced piece of music that was purposely designed to look like a unicorn, but also be musical. Right, so uh, not necessarily, well, I mean, it is musical, but it's also ridiculous, um, but worthwhile watching that kind of stuff. All right, composition is also included in here because we can sort of reverse the process. We can, and maybe your strength is composing music, writing it down on a ledger like this. You can actually take and include and arrange music in this fashion and have it played back because the MIDI technology is communicating with the sound generators, right, the instruments. So you, you can uh, take advantage of this technology in that sort of way. If you're not the performer, you might be the composer, but you can compose things that will then be played back for you because of MIDI technology's capabilities. So a lot of times, this is where, like, uh, things in the music industry and the recording process have changed from the traditional sort of tracking recording sessions and saying, well, I, we don't need all these musicians and we don't need all this, the, the worry about isolating microphones and worrying about bleed from sound sources and microphone technique and expensive equipment. We can just use MIDI technology and these sampled sounds and create loops and then uh, arrange compositions based on those. Uh, so that's what a lot of modern music is actually how it's how it's created. All right, so so there is, um, you know, the the lecture content of this, but I do want to make sure that I show you a little bit of the Pro Tools stuff. Um, so just basic again stuff about how how I can get MIDI technology working for me and what that looks like in Pro Tools. So I've actually got a 25 key MIDI keyboard controller, 
uh, that my kids use at home um, to play with GarageBand and stuff like that. Um, but if I want to use it in Pro Tools, when I create a new track, I'm going to create stereo, but instead of an audio track, I want to create an instrument track, which is interesting because it's not actually not a MIDI track, even though that's, that's an option here. Um, when I want to use a virtual instrument or a MIDI controller, I need to use an instrument track in Pro Tools. And I'm just going to expand this so you can see what it looks like a little bit more. Notice uh, a couple of differences. You know, I have the same sort of thing. You know, I've got, since it's a stereo instrument track, I have two faders or two meters here. Um, but you can sort of see the piano roll here. This is a little bit different than tracks we normally see. What I need to do, though, before I can do anything with this, is insert an instrument. And Pro Tools comes with a lot of these. Uh, I have a lot more than the, the standard version of Pro Tools. Um, but, but for this, uh, I want to just, um, I want to use the, the grand piano that, that kind of comes with Pro Tools. So here's what a virtual instrument looks like, the plug-in for it. And when I record enable this, I should be able to, I can with a mouse, play notes. Or I can play now on my MIDI controller keyboard. That's pretty cool. So now I don't necessarily need to have this pulled up to be able to, to use it, so I'm going to get rid of that. Uh, and what I'm going to do here is record uh, Mary Had a Little Lamb, why not? So here we go. Okay, now you can see a couple of different things happen here. Um, this does not look like waveform when I normally record something. This is actually giving me a MIDI representation of those event messages that correspond with their spot on the piano roll, which is like a fancy word for it, like a vertical representation of a keyboard. And if I double click on that clip, it's going to open up my MIDI editor window. And this is going to give me a visual representation again of, of what I just performed. Now let's say I get to the end here. I don't like how how long that note is. What's so nice about this is I don't I don't have to re-record. I can just shorten those things and it will be reflected. Right? So I have complete control over all this stuff. Not only that, but what if let's let's say this. What if I want it what if I made a wrong note? Right? What if, what if I wanted this to, to have a nice, like, octave lower finish to it, right? Bum, bum. That's what I want. So I can just, like, I'm just going to duplicate this note by holding Option and clicking on it. Let's see what I've got here. I still have the wrong note here. Anyway, you can see that you can, I'm like, compositionally not, not with it today. <laughs> But you can tell that you can move these things around wherever you want them to, to, to go. Uh, and not only that, but I, I can do multiple at once. Right? I can just transpose. That's pretty incredible to be able to, to have that ability. Um, so let's, um, let, let's take this a step further. What is really unique about being able to, to have um, you know this MIDI technology like this? Let's say that well, I want to play along with the metronome. Okay, so I'm going to create a click track. 
which is just going to keep the beat for me, right? Um, and I can change that tempo if I wanted to. So I can look at tempo and say, well, I really want that to be 100 beats per minute. And maybe there's some other things that I want to talk about too, the key. I'm going to play in C major, right? So I'm going to play in the key of C, and I'll play um, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star or something like that. Right? But I want to play it along with the beat, so I'm going to let that count off. Um, give me a four bar count off, and then I'm going to play along with it. Okay, now I'm going to turn this, uh, I'm going to mute the click track so I don't have to deal with that all the time. And, and look at my editor here. So when, what's important here is that I'm looking at my grid, right? So I've got lines for all these things. And if I look at this and I zoom in even further, if I can do that, you notice that I'm not perfectly on my grid. So I'm like close, but I'm off like a little bit. So what I can do is select everything. And what I want to do is quantize, which means I'm, I'm going to move those things onto the grid. Okay, so look, I have this little window. It's saying, well, what, what kind of grid do I want to use to quantize? I want to get it as close to, um, I'm doing quarter notes here. And do I want to randomize it all? Because do you want things to be exactly perfect? Or do you want them to just be, you know, do you want them to have sort of a natural feel to it? In this case, just to illustrate, I want everything to be exactly on that quarter note grid. So always with the beat, right? So I've got everything selected. I've got my quantized grid selected. Watch this. When I hit apply, everything gets shifted onto the beat. So now I've got this perfectly in time. That's pretty incredible. No need to have a perfect performance because you can just perfect it later. And I don't even have to sit here and drag and drop each, each single note or extend them or whatever. I can just tell it to do that for me, right, all at once. That's awesome. Well, what, if, what other things can I, can I do? Oh, I can transpose everything. I want to transpose it to a new key. So a couple semitones up, right? and then select what I'm transposing and hit apply, watch what happens. It just moves everything up into the new key that I wanted it to be. That's awesome. What a time saver. Now I'm gonna move it back because uh, again, uh, at the beginning, uh, over here, when I look back in my regular edit window, I had selected that I was gonna play in C major, so I wanna make sure it stays there. And the reason why is, is for this piece of, of the puzzle. Remember I said that you could work with notation or you could work back and forth. Watch it. The thing that I've created, Twinkle Twinkle Little Star, I come over here and I hit this music note. I go over to the, the notation window if my beach ball doesn't crash me here. Look at that. That's Twinkle Twinkle Little Star. How incredible. And so you, you can also do this stuff different ways. I could write the notes in this way. And then go back to my other piano roll view, and that's included those notes that I've written in that mess. It's going to be a hot mess, but listen. <laughs> right? But it, it, this goes so much further, and I'm getting excited about it. Here's my note velocity down here. So if I have a note that I've struck too hard, I can change how loudly it gets played back at that particular time. So I have control over all of that stuff. One final thing that I wanted to show you is that not only do I have the ability to make these changes and stuff after the performance has happened, I can also um, reveal another column of information here, like my inserts in my I.O. section. 
if I show the real time properties, this is going to give me control over quantization. So quarter notes, the duration. I want my duration to be quarter notes also, right? And I want my velocity to always be at 100%. And I could even, what if, I, if I'm just a terrible piano player and I can only play white keys, I could tell this to automatically transpose my music. So let's say um, that I want to transpose to a different key. So let's say, let's transpose this to D4. Okay, so I'm gonna play in one key and it's just gonna automatically turn it to another. That's amazing. So watch what happens. So this is all happening. Again, real-time properties. It's going to happen as I do it. So I'm going to bring the click track back in. And I'll play along. Now what's interesting is that it's automatically transposing it to the one note that I've selected. So I'm playing Twinkle Twinkle Little Star in its entirety, but it's only transposing to that one note. Look at that. When I turn it off, there's my actual performance of Twinkle Twinkle. Amazing. Um, so many different things happening here, um, but it just is like a, you know, just just skimming the surface on what MIDI technology allows you to do. Um, so you can play around with this kind of stuff. If you don't have a MIDI controller, you can do these kinds of things just with the mouse um, and the, the pencil tool, right? And I can create these whole musical compositions. Um, well, I guess one, one last thing that I want to show you is that, let's say that I no longer like the mini grand piano. I can keep, but I want, I mean, I have my performance and I still want it to be twinkle, twinkle, little star, but I want to use something more like a synthesizer that this is the stock synthesizer that comes with Pro Tools. And I'm going to use my presets to find a different sort of sound, right? So let's try weird valve for some reason. And let's hear what it sounds like. You could go down this rabbit hole forever. All I have to do is hit the plus sign and move on to a different preset, and let's see what we get. Um, I'll, I'll loop my performance here. go down that rabbit hole for a long long time and just auditioning different sounds until you get just the right thing that you're looking for. So lots of fun to be had with MIDI, um, lots of discussion to be had too about whether or not it's a good thing, but um, this is definitely the, the way of the music industry um, and, and it's only going to become more and more relevant uh, as we continue. Thanks for watching this, I'll see you next time guys.